sort of post COVID stats and um, you know, there's been an upward um, the surge in all areas except for maybe Gisborne. <laughs>
it's it's unfathomable here. Yeah, it's 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 untamable. Eh? It's uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, so are you looking at at the moment? You're looking at um, uh, main cities, or uh, you know, are you looking at the provinces or something? Or uh, my main focus is is mainly being the larger cities, just because that that offers more security for investors. Um, because you've got the larger population, you know, potentially higher paid salaries um, and more rental demand. Um, so that that gives you security and potentially more capital growth. Not always. Sometimes the smaller towns can have more. But insofar as an investing strategy, that would be a way to bulletproof it. My only disclaimer on that would be that not everyone has sufficient amount to enter you know, Auckland, Wellington. Sure. Areas, so th- there's certainly nothing wrong with a smaller town. Um, I probably wouldn't go for um, towns that are really small that are relied on one type of industry. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yep. so you are in Tower and stuff is perfect because there's enough there's enough industries and employment there that that's even though that's a small town. It's it's a great place to invest. Um, yeah. 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 Tower a really funny one in terms of it's it. It, they seem to have just forgotten there are only 120,000 people there. They've just kind of built a city and, and they, um, yeah, they, it's, it feels like a big city, even though it's really, it's really not in terms of population. Eh? So. Yeah. I mean, the <clears throat> motorway and uh, ways they've done everything is, is impressive. Everyone should look at that all the way you can get to Tauranga and in and out of Tauranga now is, mm. it's, it's really cool. Yeah. They have, they've yeah. sort of almost future built it to, for a demand that, that may or may not may or may not go there, but um, but yeah, that that would be overall that my my investing strategy for most clients would be to get them into a larger area, um, yep. and then you know if they, if they couldn't do that, then sort of pick certain certain locations that perform a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. And I guess um, so. We wanted to talk about cash flow versus you know capital growth. I guess the clue is in the title, right? Cash flow property. Um, yeah. That's that's what you aim for first, and then chase capital growth second. That's yeah, yeah. So I think I think um, being a property investor, it's uh, you're actually doing it based on it working right now, not not being a speculator. So speculation is a different thing. And you can be quite successful at that as well by picking areas that may perform better than others. Um, but it's it's a punt, you know. Yep. So you so for so for an investor, you really want to sit down and go, do the numbers work now? Does the rent cover the outgoings? And is it neutral or you know, potentially slightly more cash flow. Like when I started the business back in the day, you'd get 10, 11 percent yield in most areas. That doesn't yeah. happen anymore. But, you know, you will eventually get that yield. You know, your purchase price is now at 5% yield. Over time, your rent will go up and you will eventually get a slightly better yield. But, yeah, yeah cash flow is, is, is key, um, you know, to maintaining um, and holding them. Um, or else, you, 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 if it's only a short-term investment and you're topping it up, mm. um, you know, you've just got to be careful with interest rates being so low right now. Yeah, if you're topping it up at two point seven percent, then uh, yep. it's going to be a bad day at five percent, isn't it? Yeah. Bad, bad day. Yeah, and we will eventually get back there. Yep, it's just I agree. Dream. So, um, so yeah, so that's really um, uh, sort of how I started um, started my businesses that I originally bought investment properties for myself, and then you eventually work out you can't continue to buy forever because the banks yep. are like, you yeah, know, we don't do that. So I thought, well, people must want these deals because I was quite good at negotiating deals and doing the due diligence and making sure that everything, you know, sort of fitted in correctly. Um, and that's still the same now. I don't, I wouldn't market someone, something through the database that, that didn't sort of pay its own way. Yeah. 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 And we find as well, you know, people get, people can get one or two um, investment properties based on what they've got, but they eventually run out of income and probably income before equity, right? So you can yeah. always landscape and paint and carpet and that boosts your equity quite significantly. Yeah. But could, income is easy. Yeah. You can't you can't ask your boss for another thirty thousand bucks, right? So so you've got to and focus even, on that and even if you could the bank would want to see a trend of that for a few years. 
Right. Yeah. Yeah. You can't, yeah. Go and get, you can't win 30 grand at the casino. And so I now have 30 grand. Yeah. <laughs> Self-employed gambler. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you're right. Whereas, whereas rent is, uh, rent is reliable. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So have you got any examples of some recent properties? You don't have to name the address or anything, but just kind of the numbers around them and kind of what you're looking at? You got any? Yes, yeah, so I've got one at the moment, which is South Auckland, which has actually got a resource consent to subdivide um, and create a site at the back of about 440 square metres. Um, and that's getting um, about 660 a week rent. Um, purchase price is 780. So it's probably about sort right. of 4.5%. Four four yeah, yeah. yeah. So that would sort of that would pay its own way, but that that one is more of a strategy of adding a second dwelling and getting your income your income from that. Um, and some of the previous properties I've sold were ones we add bedrooms and you know it's quite a large house. It's a three bedroom, doesn't need two lounges, so you're converting a bedroom and then you're getting a yield from that. Yeah, um, and that works quite well. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's um, subdividing is certainly a great way to. Uh, to boost that income, because eh? you've already got the land, and it's, it's a reasonable cost to subdivide in for sure. But it's um, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, if you put a, if you put another property on the back there, you might be sort of four hundred k in, um, mm. which would mean that you'd be getting sort of two lots of six hundred, six fifty rent, so say thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars a week rent. Yep, um, and that would still be sort of five, six percent yield, um, and would be sufficient cash flow. Yeah. Mm. Did you? Uh, I know I didn't. I didn't. We didn't talk about this beforehand. But um, have you seen any uh, changes from the ring fence? The, the ring fence losses. Have you noticed any change off the back of that, or did investors just carry on as normal? Um, I think some. I think some people exited, um, but uh, in in general, once people are sort of have already done the done the work and got in. You know, it's not. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to exit. Yeah. Because it really, is, because really, it's a long term, a long term investment anyway. So, um, so, so potentially, if they're introducing, you know, new measures to make it a little bit harder. At the end of the day, if you've done your numbers at the beginning to make it work, it shouldn't. You know, it shouldn't make that big a difference because I mean, obviously, back in the day when we when I sort of started, the interest rates were about eleven percent, and you used to be able to negatively gear it and in fact they used to run seminars around the country on how to negatively gear stuff and I went to those yeah. <laughs> yeah we all thought it was super exciting and I did it yeah. and you know you got in and, and you got you know you got your IR 23 BS or whatever it was and you get your yeah. salary um tax re reduced and get paid weekly and stuff like that so that was that was all great um but you know that, that it's a different landscape now so really investing mm -hmm. in today's market you'd want to make sure that the rental income is sufficient to pay your mortgage your rates insurance all that sort yep. of stuff you, you know you, you shouldn't really be be running them at too big a loss yeah anyway um, uh, i have a concern for people that are reliant on that tax yeah um, you know the the tax back to to live that's a um yeah, yeah it's a big concern yeah. for the financial a position yeah, it's a plus if you can if you can use it, but but fundamentally that that should work on its own, and that mm. that that's the that's the best way forward. And in my experience with the investors who have survived, you know, the GFC and and all sorts of bits and pieces with fluctuations, it's always because fundamentally they bought something that the rent was more than sufficient to cover the outgoings, and then they did get capital growth. Um, which is great, but they, yeah. weren't, they weren't reliant on it. If, if they hadn't had it, they still would be in a good position. Still, but, still feed yeah. itself, eh? Yeah. 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 Hey, um, so we see a bit uh, in those first investment property buyers, their concern, like they, you know, they've, they've paid down their mortgage. They've got sort of from 700,000 to 400,000, you know, mortgage, they've paid it down. And suddenly the idea of, you know, whacking on another 600,000 and they owe over a million dollars kind of, um, kind of freaks them out. Right. And, um, so, yeah. so do you, what's your sort of, um, what's your best advice for first investment property buyers? Yeah. I mean, I guess you've got to work out why you're doing it. You know, if, if it's, if it's to give you money when you retire, um, you know, then then you look at it as a long term strategy. So yes, you're getting a mortgage, but you're actually controlling an asset with no money in really because you're using the equity from your own house. Um, so uh, over the over the long term, um, 
you're going to make sufficient money to make it worthwhile. So it's just sitting down with people and working out actually what, what are the things that they are worried about and just sort of speaking to those bits and pieces. Because I know when I bought my first investment property, I was like, well, what if it happened if the tenants don't pay their rent? And it's like, well, you know, the tenants will pay their rent or you'll get another tenant. You're, you know, yep. there's always more tenants than, <laughs> than there is houses. So that side of it is, is fine. And then people talk about, you know, what happens if we lose the job or we don't have income to do it. And you fall back to what we spoke about before, which is that it should work on its own anyway without you topping it up. So if you've got something that is cash flow neutral or slightly cash flow positive, then if you, you're not having income, that, that, that shouldn't change it. You should still be able to hold that asset and it should sort of tick over on its own as its own little sort of business. Mm. Do you yeah. use property managers for ten, just thinking about tenants and things? You, you like me? Yeah, I do. And I recommend people do because you don't, you don't want to be in the business of running it, but that's the part of the business that's just not much fun. Yeah. And that's why a lot of people get in and get out because they buy something and they think, well, I'll just do all the maintenance and the tenants can call me any time. And <laughs> they get three years into it and they, they just sort of get a bit over it. And so yeah. you really want to, you know, that's not your job. Your job is, it's, it's an investment. So you shouldn't, um, you, you shouldn't be getting too involved with bits and pieces. You know, you want to oversee everything and you want the property manager reporting to you. Um, but you certainly don't want to be dealing with the tenants all day, every day. Yeah, well, there's, there's quite strict rules around tenancies as well that you can easily breach if you don't know them right like it's yeah yeah and they're not always immediately obvious rules either no no um, you want to hire people that are in it all the time and 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 another thing is is that as they know all the people as well so hmm. like they know the people who are applying so people who are bad tenants maybe they won't apply through a property manager yeah, go for a private listing because they know that they're going to credit check them. They probably know them, you know. So you do get you get much better quality tenants, and that they can be sort of your barrier between it, where they can be quite strict and say, "Well, no, this needs to be done." Mm. Because doing it yourself, you kind of human nature. You'd be like, "Oh, no, it'll be okay," you know. Don't yeah. worry. Yeah, just catch up when you can. If you've got another property manager doing it. It sort of gives you a bit of separation to say, "Well, you know." Just, yeah. that's what I've said to do they can be the bad cop yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. cool man hey well that's been real real cool chat and um, so uh, if they want to sign up for your newsletter that's the best way to kind of get an idea of what you're um, what you've got on the market is it so yeah um, definitely if they just go to cashflowproperty.co.nz um, they can yeah. see the properties on there and just sign up and then we do a mail out a couple of times a week or maybe once a week Yep. Um, with new listings um, or they can just contact me directly and have a chat about what the investing uh, requirements are and we can source some property to meet to meet their requirements as well yeah cool and uh, do they pay a fee to you for that or um... no we generally just get the vendor to pay us yeah so yes yeah, so there's yep. no involved it's much easier yeah awesome hey cool thanks for uh, thanks for dialing in that's been awesome perfect thank you cheers